Hi guys, how are you all today? Sorry, I was running a little bit late. They're actually still in the meeting that I was supposed to be in and they were, we were supposed to be done at three, but you know how that goes. Good to see you all here. Um, I hope you all are ready for some fun today. And oh, what did I forget? Oh, I forgot something over at the sewing machine. So let me go grab that real quick. Because this was a specific question. And I was working on that earlier today. Okay, so first off, oh man, I forgot. I got to do a little technical stuff here on the back side for just a second. Um, let me get my phone connected to my computer. So hang tight. Like I said, we just did not get done in time today. So while y'all are rolling in, I'm going to get my phone connected to my computer here. And let's see if we can mirror a screen. Oh, come on. Um, hold on. So um, while I'm doing this, I'm going to continue to talk. Hang tight. Um, one of the questions was how to add fabric to the advanced quilt design software. And this will actually work for both advanced quilt design, BES Blue, and BES 4. So that is so it that is not a it's not a bad thing for me to show today. So let me see here reflector. There we go. Um, let's see here. Link with the camera. So let me link my phone to this. There we go. All right. So now I should be able to screen mirror, and that's the first thing we're gonna do here. So let me share my screen allow where did it go there we go maybe screen mirror desktop so, <laughs> we're trying we're, I'm, I'm trying it's a, i had this figured out yesterday I'm going to share screen number two. Now, if I can get my thing to show up over here, it's taken, a, taken it a minute to be able to connect. So why it's doing that thing, we will um, go ahead and multiply and do something else. The other question, so while I'm waiting on that one, I'm going to go ahead and do something else. So you had an eat carrot. Oh my goodness. Um, hold on. We are banning that user. Um, <clears throat> so Okay, share screen. Why are you not sharing the screen? All right, let's just go on to something else while we're doing it. Background wizard in PE Design 11. So somebody asked a question about how you remove the background and put stippling around an applique design. So that's the first thing I'll show you while we're trying to wait on my computer to play nice with others here. Let me add my screen in and you can see my little list of topics here. We're going to minimize that. And let me just do new here. Okay. <clears throat> so if you are MP Design 11, this is really simple. And I'm just going to go ahead and make us just a basic applique here. So here's a bunny head. Let's make us a basic applique. Here's my design. I'm going to go home, applique wizard, and we're going to replace it and just make a basic applique. Default settings, everything's there. So, well, I mean, y'all can play with this if you want. So if you wanted to add eyes to this, we could come in here and say, we want a satin stitch and I don't want an outline. So we'll take it to not sewn and let's add us some eyes here. And um, we might not want those eyes to be red. So if there's a little cheater's way to get to your color palette, which is right up here on the shapes tab, once you have something drawn, you can grab that and just change the color directly there, which is really kind of nice. And if you want those two eyeballs to be just exactly alike, you can go to your home tab, choose a range copy and just say vertical mirror copy. And then you can take that one and plop it over to the opposite side. Do you see that little dragon spot? Left click and there you go. So now you've got your eyeballs. Uh, let's say we want a nose. What kind of a shape could we use as a nose? We could use this one and mirror it. So let's kind of put this thing in here. Actually, that's not bad that direction, but let me flip it. 
So I've got it selected. Let's go to flip and let's flip it vertically and see if we like that better. There we go. I do kind of like that better. And then you can add a mouth. So let's say shapes tool. Here's your curved line drawing tool. And let's just left mouse click in here. Where you click is where it's going to curve. Double click to finish it off. Now I had turned my outline off for the circles. So that's why the rabbit mouth does not appear to have an outline on it, which it doesn't. It has no stitch properties right now. So let's change it from not sewn and give it a triple stitch. And there you go. So I shrunk that in a little bit. And there we go. We have this little bitty bunny rabbit. And if you want it all kit and caboodle grouped together so that you can center it, grab it all. Control G for group. Now, let's put that in the middle of the page. The easiest way to do that is control M for middle. And let's see what hoop size I have selected. So I'm going to come into the hoop design settings. I have a six by six inch frame. So let's say we wanted to do that in an eight by eight inch frame. There we go. Now, to be able to stipple around the design without it going underneath the design, we're going to touch our background fill wizard. You'll notice I don't have anything selected. Okay. So touch the background fill wizard. And we, she wanted a stippling, so we're going to touch stippling stitch. And let's touch the background to actually stipple. So there we go. And we're going to go ahead and touch next. So now you can see the stippling stitches running around the outside edge. And you can change the stippling spacing. I believe the default is like 5 or 10. I had mine at a loosey-goosey one, so it all depends on what you want. If I go to a smaller number here and update my preview, you'll notice that my stippling is more dense. So once you've done that, um, you just click OK. And your stippling is now re ready to go there. So everybody got that? Any questions on that one? I'm still trying to connect here, so give me just a second to try to connect if this doesn't work, we're just going to kind of talk it through. Okay, let's see if it connects this way. And... Okay, it's not going to do it today, guys. So, oh, I, I just saw it. It flashed up for just a second. <laughs> but where did it go? <laughs> oh, well. Okay, I cry, uncle. We're not even going to try it anymore. I give up. I, it's not going to happen. So, we will show you how to add it without doing that. In advanced quilt design software. I'm going to come in here and talk you all through this. So you take a picture on your with your device, okay? Email it to yourself. So you're basically taking a piece of fabric, whatever you've got. Now, I, this is stitched, but kind of get the, the idea. You're just going to take a picture with your phone. Crop it down to where it's just a, it's kind of a square. You can edit that directly on your phone and then email it to yourself. Save that file to your computer. So now that you've saved that file, let's see what we can do. I'm going to go back over to my screen mirroring and let's go into our palette creator down here. The, here's your palette. I'm going to bring that back over to the other screen here. And when you see fabrics, you can choose add. And I tell you to bring it in as a square because that will make your life a little easier when it comes to repeats. So let me see if I go into my libraries, if I have any saved there probably not so let's go to pc and i know i have some saved in my advanced quilt design software area so let's see here here we go here's some green leaf fabric so there's my square i'm going to open it up and if you look it'll be in the alphabetical order of whatever it's named 
So when, there's my dark green leaf. So this should be green leaf right there. So there it is ready for me to use. Okay. And then that, that's the way it's going to work in BES4 as well. But while we're over here, Caroline, here is your answer to your question. I don't know which block you're using, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to grab a block from the block library. Let's see here. What have we got? Stars. So I'm going to grab this one, right mouse click and choose edit. That allows me to edit the block itself. Okay. If you put it in a, um, in the quilt, it won't let you do that. But now to it, her question was, how does she get two of these triangles together? Click on the first one, hold the control key down and click on the second one. Then you can unite it. That's how you basically edit a block that you already have. So if it's a built in block and I don't remember exactly which block you said it was. Let me see if I can look and see. Uh, stars 19. Okay. So let's write, come down here to stars 19. Right mouse click, edit. And let's say you want those two right there to be combined. So left mouse click on each of them and then unite. And now that's one block. So for instance, let's say you wanted these four combined into a square. You hold the control key down, unite. And now that is one unit instead of a broken up thing. Okay. Does that make sense? Oops. Did I, was I actually even showing you all that? Yes, I was good. <laughs> I was like, am I looking at you or am I showing you that? So that's how you do that little trick. Okay. Now to use that fabric, let's say we want to use the fabric that we just added. Here we go. We're going to select this. And we're going to go back into our thread palette area. Let me bring that back over here. And let's say we wanted to grab the green leaf. There you go. See, there's my green leaf fabric that I just added. So that's how you actually add those fabrics in. If I go into my BES software. Okay. So when might I use this? This is for appliques. So let's come in here and let's add in an applique design. Let's say we have this right here. Now, when I select it, we haven't really talked about this before, but you have this option down here of choosing fabrics for your applique. So that little select button right there allows you to look at the fabrics in your library and select one. So once again, if you want to add a fabric, select add, pick a fabric and select open. So there's that fabric. Now I can apply it. Well, did I select it? Huh? Why is my computer? Oh, I've got both parts of this selected. So you do have to have just the applique itself selected. Now let's see what happens. There we go. Because those both weren't the app, those both weren't appliques, just one section of it was. I needed to select the actual applique. Well, I'm showing all kinds of stuff in trash in my back room this morning or this afternoon. Okay. So, and the same thing works in BES Blue. If you want to add a fabric to be able to see it in your appliques, that's where you do it. All right. How am I doing on time today? Oh, I'm jamming today. We're not going to be able, I, I just can't show you the, the uh, it will not let me connect my phone for some reason. I have no idea why. It is just not playing nice with others. So we're going to forget about that activity and go on. Now, the next question I had was, how do I trace a um, image in BES4? Okay. <laughs> Jan, that's cute. Um, Edna, there are no power packs needed for being able to select fabric. That is a base level BES4, BES Blue. I'm trying to remember since Simply Applique, I can open it up and see 
if it's in simply applique i do not remember i cannot that that one's not in my brain today so i'm i'm opening up simply applique um quilt block challenge um okay I, i'm going back to read that thing again hold on All right, Cindy, um, get, get with me and give me a little bit more detail. I'm not real sure what you're asking. So if you'll come back to me on that one, we'll, we'll discuss it. Um, just email me and, and email me what you've got, what you did. And so I can kind of figure that out for you. Because I honestly, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. You're going to, what you're going to do, Lois, is you're going to take a picture on your phone or with a digital camera, whatever you want to do. Take a picture, crop it. Now, I mean, I usually edit mine on my computer in Photoshop, but if you, if you don't have editing software, you do it on your phone. Every phone you have, you have crop, you can lighten. So crop it down to a square, brighten it up if you want to, and then email it to yourself. Once you've received the email, download that and save it to your computer. Then you add the fabric like I showed you. Okay. So you, you have your, your, your software is not going to find it on your phone. You have to email it to yourself. Okay. Now let's see here. Uh, I'm looking to see if Simply Applique has it because I just, open simply applique and we'll see if it has that option because i do not remember off the top of my head so here's my simply applique let's come in and add an applique shape and let's just do there we go now if i select my applique yes fabric selection and you have add fabric there as well so once again let's see if i go into my pictures I have fabrics right here. And if you have, if you know the fabric designer, you can usually go to their website and actually download that fabric to use, which I use. I do that an awful lot. Okay. That is, um, I mean, it will give you a pristine image. So I do that activity quite a lot. I'll just go um, to the fabric manufacturer and basically they have little thumbnails and you can right mouse click and choose save image as and there you've got your thumbnail of your photo of your fabric okay next up on our list today is a little bit more advanced um okay so deleting tack down stitches from an applique here's the deal you must make sure you have your applique the way you want it before you do this because you are not going to be able to edit it after this part. So I created a stitch by a stitch length that's too large, which is this one. I'm going to come in and change that to a satin stitch and I'm going to change my fabric back to none so that I can, we're going to go back to none so that we're not having to see it. Oh, I do have to just have the applique none. Okay. Now we need to change this. I forgot to apply that. Let's change this to a different color. Oh, I'm in Simply Applique. I can't do that in this program. So in Simply Applique, I cannot. Let's do the same thing over here. Add design. Here's my anchor. And there we go. So if you want to make any changes to it, you need to make those first. This is telling me I've gotten too big for a satin stitch, which means that right there, if I look at it, See how it dropped those stitches in the middle? That's telling me that's where that problem exists. So I can change that from a satin to a different style stitch or put a carved stitch in there, whatever you want to do. You'll notice when I look here, I have a placement stitch and a tack down stitch. If I want to get rid of the tack down stitch, I need to select the design right mouse click on it and choose preserve as stitches the second one is your tack down it's the inner stitch press delete on your keyboard and now you're left with the base stitch so um karen 
sometimes we don't, I mean, if you've got an adhesive backing on it, you, it, it's not truly necessary to be able to stitch the tack down stitch. The covering stitch should be just fine. There are times that I prefer to do the covering stitch, but um, it just depends on what the user's going to do. And instead of skipping it at the machine, you can delete it here. So it all depends on what you want. Hi, Pat. Long time no see. I just saw Pat over at Mid-South on Friday. Yeah. So, all right. We're ready to move on to the next one. Now, this next little trick is a little bit more advanced. And you may or may not want to do it. That is totally up to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, somebody asked me if we could recreate a stitch in PE Design 11. I'm going to sit here and tell you. I oh, Actually, no, I don't want to do that yet. We're going to do drawing around um, image tracing a drawing. Okay. If you have Power Pack 2, there is the act you have an auto image tracer okay that allows you to bring in an image file and if you notice it tells you these are the image file types that you can bring in pdf is not one of those options okay so png however is if you if you have a png file you can select that p um jpeg PNG, whatever you want to do, besides it, PDF does not work, okay? That's a print, uh, portable document file is what PDF is. So, you know, it's not really, it is an image file, but not really an image file. Once you've done, selected that, there's our auto image tracer. It found, if we look here, let me go back. We're good. We can tell it what size we want, and I'm going to leave it alone. It has found all of the colors in our design. So if I just touch next, that's what it's going to do. You'll notice it's going to give me a um, bold area for the outer border. So that would convert more to like a fill than it would to an applique. If I convert the black part to an applique, it's not going to do so well just so you all understand that because if we take off the fill you see how that's not a saw so i mean there's a double outline there so if i convert that to applique you're going to have a, quite the little mess there that's not what you would actually want it to do so it all depends on what you're planning on doing but can i edit that yes i can so if i come in here and i zoom I can come grab that shape, I can go to my tools tab, edit shape, and then I can right mouse click and delete a point or actually let's split the line. Right mouse click here and split the line again. Now I should have two lines. That's that inner one, that's the outer one, and we should be able to edit that shape a little bit more. Let's delete that point and then right mouse click away from it. Now you have a shape that is a single line. Um, I'm gonna smooth that out and we'll smooth that out a little bit. So there's his, there's his eye. What, when would I use this? So now I convert that, I can convert that to a run or I can convert that to an applique. And in this time, it would just be a single line. And if I was just trying to get like a satin stitch, I could change my stitch length to um, small, uh, excuse me, my width to like a two millimeter. And then I might use that preserve as stitches function to delete those two lines underneath it because I don't need them. Okay. Now, if you do not have that power pack, everybody has this capability. Backdrop tool, load backdrop. Here's your moon or we would open it. If you go to your tools tab, you have an artwork tool. Everybody has the line tool. As you add power packs, you get more tools. I think um, power pack one gave you the line curve and the arc. Power pack two added the pen and the bezier tool. Okay. So let's say we want to do 
uh, I'll go with line because everybody has line. Just because it says line doesn't mean that that's all you have. Now, if I go to my view tab, my backdrop is a little dark for me. So if you touch the backdrop, it will activate that backdrop and we can change that transparency level down to about 50% or maybe when you want it 75, whatever you want. There is an entire lesson on this in my BES4 book on how to do this. Artwork tool. And if you want to do the control key, let you make curves. So we are simply doing the line tool. And when I get to a corner, I'll take off my control key and take a click. When I get close to the end, I say close shape. And it should close my, let me select it and then close my shape. There we go. Now, if I convert that to applique now, there you go. That's how that works. Okay, so you want to do your moon. You do the same thing. Come in here and we're going to click around. And I'm just left clicking with my control key. And then when I want to turn a corner, I let go of the control key. So for this one, I would not want that the, the little accent lines. Oops, undo. I would not want the little accent lines to actually be part of the applique. So that's where I'm not going to do that. We're going to kind of go ahead and click around here. And I right mouse clicked a minute ago, so sorry about that. This is a little bit more intensive, but you will actually get very good results. And you could also take this into Canvas Workspace and have Canvas Workspace image trace it for you if you don't have Power Pack 2 if, and you don't want to do this yourself. So I'm going to click on it and say close shape. Now I can convert that to an applique. And the reason I close the shape is so that when I click to have it um, create my cut file for my scan and cut, it needs to be a closed line. I mean, you could always leave it open, but it needs to be a closed line when you're trying when you're trying to get it to cut. Otherwise, that fabric's not going to cut all the way. It's going to stop where you stopped clicking, okay? Yes, Wanda, there are books available. It is L-E, it's my lettering so easy for BES4 book, okay? And it takes you through all of the basics and it includes the Power Pack 1 features. It's, so it's, it's kind of a com combination of the two. By the time I got it written, Power Pack 1 was coming out. So I felt like I needed to go ahead and do both items in one. Okay. So, um, yes, Josie, it is possible to save the original one. So save it as one and then save it as preserved as stitches the second time. So if you wanted to go back and edit something, you could. That That's the best way to do that. Okay. So now I'm done with the BES. If there's... Um, it, no other questions on that today. And that same technique that I just did would, would apply to BES Blue as well and Simply Applique. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, Simply Applique, you can't bring in the backdrop. You would have to use Canvas Workspace because we don't have that backdrop tool in, in um, Simply Applique. All right. Okay, so let's go to PE Design 11. And let me select all and delete this. And let's see what we got. Let me double check my list here to make sure I'm answering the easiest to hardest questions. So yeah, I've already done the hard question, the easy question in PE Design 11. Let's do the harder one. Okay. Um... Where did I find that piece of artwork? Did I save it? I did. I'm going to right mouse click on my design page and say input from file. And so this is for an image file. Or I could go to my image tab and choose open from file. Either way. So I want you all to see this stitch here. Um, this was not particularly this de design, but 
uh, that's too close but she wants a stitch like this and so it's kind of a chain stitch and when I played around with it the chain stitch I could not get small enough so I'm going to show you my little trick on how to do this now depending on it, variegated thread is not really going to work these are multiple colors so if you're depending on what you're doing is depending on how you're going to do this I'm going to show you what I came up with so Sandra if you there you go so this one right the one that's open would be the one that is the best option in my opinion that is the closest look to what you wanted um so depending on what you're going to do variegated thread would not be your best friend because you can't predict how, when it's going to change colors there are some that are long variegations and some that are shorter unfortunately the only ones i had in my house were the short repeats so yes i will show you that crafty if you remind it, uh, marilyn if you remind me before i get done here i will show you that um so it's it's basically I, I ended up having to create a stitch i'm going to show you what i did to try things out so you can see how my brain worked um so first of all let's just draw us one of these shapes so i'm going to come in here and i'm going to grab my curved line drawing tool and i'm going to left mouse click around this flower petal to turn my corner touch the z key and that changes it to a stripe that lets you turn the corner and then you can touch the x key to go back to the curves if that's too much for you then you can always come up to the top and switch back and forth between the two here i personally use my keyboard shortcuts just simply because i find it easier double click when you get close to the end so there is my line now let me let me fade out my image a little bit so you can see Here's my line. <coughs> Everybody see that? And I need to close my shape. So I'm going to select my edit tool. I forgot to choose the close shape tool. Right mouse. Let's select this. Right mouse click. And we're going to say close because I left. I had an open shape. So now if I go to my shapes tool and I change this from a triple stitch, I'm going to have it not sewn. And I changed this to a spiral stitch, okay? Now, these are the settings that I used. And this is if you don't want a color change, okay? So these are the settings that I used. And depending on where you started clicking is de gonna depend on where things end up being, okay? My density if I is at 0.6. If I go to the default, 2.0 is the default. That is too close together we need it lower so you need them spaced further apart in order for this little technique to work and then we have this little button called convert region to line okay what does that do for me instead of this being a fill stitch you'll notice that and let me undo this so you all can see i'm going to go back up to my shapes tool do you see how this says spiral stitch and not sewn here if I convert region to line, I'm no longer going to see a fill stitch. It's only an outline stitch. So this gives me that option of changing stitch types here. But if I choose a change, chain stitch on this one, the as low as I can go is three millimeters. And that is too close together for this. I mean, too big. That's just too big of a stitch. So what I figured out was to come up here and choose motif stitch. Now, there is in your software i'm trying to bring this over here in your software there is this little chain stitch right here motif 48 and that's what i started with okay but i decided that's not exactly what i need it to be okay so since that's not what i need even if i take it down to two millimeters we can take it down to two millimeters and see that's close but still still not quite what I want it to be. It's still a little too wide, especially based on the density that I chose. So let's go up to our options menu and choose programmable stitch creator. This is going to open up our programmable stitch creator. This is where you can create your own stitches 
or modify ones that are in the program. All right, so let's go in here and let's say open and I'm going to choose that chain stitch. So let's see here. I don't remember which one it is. So we'll just use our arrow keys. I think it's 48 until we get to it. So let's see here. Yep, it's 48. So this is the one I started with. Okay. And the first thing I knew I wanted to do was I wanted it skinnier because that was my main problem. So I turned on a grid on my view tab. I turned on my grid and I made them kind of wide. I didn't make it the widest, but I made it kind of wide. So I've got three across, three up from, or actually four up from that line. Let's do three is what I think I ended up going. Either one's kind of good. It, it doesn't matter, but I watched this one actually sew to see if it was going to do what I wanted it to do. And it did. So I took this and I brought it down to about halfway. And then I took this little stitch right here and moved it down and deleted it. Because that, that was actually going to take a needle drop. Now you'll notice that here's where my stitch starts. So I'm going to go ahead and put that to the beginning. But let's take this apart a little bit. So you'll notice how that stitch starts right here this this is the start point it's going to go up here going to go down here going to go down here and here well that's close to what i want it to do but not quite i want it to do some repeats because a chain stitch actually has at least three repeats so i'm going to take this and take it at a point and drag it over there add a point drag it here click and add a point and drag it right there so that's one repeat right and then we're going to come here. Oh, don't worry, unless, Cindy, we're going to save it as something else. So this is the third. So that makes it go around three times, which is exactly what I want it to do. Once I've done that, I'm going to take my stop point and put it right there. And we're going to come up to the Save As menu. And if you're scared about changing anything first, save it as, cha as um, a chain. Save it as something else before you start playing with the original. Okay? So let's go ahead and say, I, and I want it to be, I'm going to change my default size to three millimeters and save it. Okay. Now let's go back over to our software program. So here's version 11 back open. And you can do that in version 10 as well. You can't do the convert regions to line. That is a new feature. So let's see here where my chain is. Oh, actually, I must have made this wider. Maybe I had it down to two. Yep, it looks like my final one, it looks like I took to two. But we'll see what we like here. And let's change that width down to two. I did make settings. I, I did make recommendations for myself. So hold on. Let's see what I ended up doing. Just so that I could remember for y'all. Oh, 3.8 is what I made that be. Okay, so you're going to see that stitch get wider, but notice how it's not just crammed in there like it was when we had that other chain stitch up. Okay, the other thing that I did was if we look at, if I change this back to a chain stitch, actually, let's do this. Let's just draw a line here so you all can see the difference. I'm going to draw a line right here, and I'm going to draw a line right here. And this one, we're going to make, actually, I'm going to make this one the chain stitch. And it's going the left direction, so we can change it to go the right direction. And you'll notice how the tip of that chain goes into the other. And it doesn't have that line in the middle of it. So if I wanted to get rid of that, I could. But I actually liked my stitch pretty well when I went to sew it. So if I come here and I grab this, this spacing option allows you to reduce that number. And I believe I took it down to about 0.2. So maybe a little bit further, 0.3. I'm going to look at see what my final numbers were here. Um, 3.9 was my final size and point, negative 
four was my spacing. So I let it overlap that much. And you can see that there's just no way I could get this one small enough. This is as small as it goes. But this option really gave me that opportunity to make this 3.9. I changed my spacing down so that it gave it, a, you know, that overlap that I was looking for. And then since it's a line and not a region anymore, I can use my edit point tool and take out anything I didn't like, which was this line right here. So how would I do this if I wanted multiple colors for this fill? That is the tricky part. So I'm going to go ahead and make this, these take a few edit nodes out and we'll pop this up a little bit so it extends further up and we'll pop this one up a little bit so it extends further up. But if you're wanting to make different colors, you got to decide where you're going to want that color break to start. So right here, I would say split at point. And so you'll notice that that area is no longer the same color. And if I want that one to be a different color, I'm going to say split at point. So now, if we look over here, I have one color here. I have another color right here that I can come up, do that little shortcut. And let's say we want it to be that color of green. And this one, let's do a shortcut. and Let's make it be this color of green. So that is how you would make it change those options. And if you wanted it going a different direction, you that's still doable because we haven't changed anything. So remember that first chain stitch that we looked at up here was going, it was, this one was going to the left. The default setting was going to the left. So if you wanted your motif to be changed to a different direction, right now it's going to the right, you can change it to go to the left. So that, those are the ways that you can change it. All right. Now I'm going to come back over and we're going to look and see what we've got. It doesn't look exactly like what it will stitch at, but I mean, you actually have the capability of coming in here and changing the points on each of the sections. So if you want that to come to more of a point, drag it, drag that out a little bit. If you want this down further, you can drag these edit nodes down further to where they're surrounding the outside edge. So there's that. And then you could come and bring this one down a little bit further. And you might say, let's see here. I think if I hold my Alt key down, I can connect that piece up together. So do you notice what I just did? That is something I don't show a lot of. So I'm going to undo what I just did. We have the this line is one continuous line, but it's not connected. So if I want it connected up, I left click on that edit node touch the Alt key on my keyboard, and you see how it turns to the symbol of a hand and an X. Well, it shows me the other X that it can connect to. Left click on that, and you are done. Okay? So, um, that's how that works. I mean, really, the variegated thread, it depends on the variegated thread. If you look here, this is my variegated. I didn't like the look of that. It just wasn't, uh, you couldn't tell when the repeat was going to happen. So it was not as folk arty as she wanted it to look. But truly being able to split that line and move things apart, it, it, it's not that, not that hard. Okay. Um, as far as I know, no, there's not an update. They just sold the, or they sold the full, uh, a whole new book. That's that as far as I know, that's it. I, and that, I did not write that book, guys. So um, just keep that in mind. Well, <laughs> I, um, yeah, you could change it to two repeats instead of three. You could leave it at one repeat. Uh, the, the, you know, you could use a heavier weight thread or a, um, a cotton thread, a cotton embroidery thread, or, or a matte finished embroidery thread, I think would be very pretty with it. Um, that, but I mean, that's really, that that's how I would do it. Who gave me angry faces today? Tracy, you do that all the time. So yeah, Marcia, go back in really and watch from the beginning. There's a lot that I've covered today. 
So let's see here. What was the question that asked if I could do um, save a block in advance to send it to the scan account? Yes, I can certainly do that. All right. So let's go back to our advanced design quilt software and see where we are here. Okay. Now, okay, let's see here. Let me get out of this. And I'm just going to do file new block. Okay, so actually, let's say we want to edit this block. And you made changes. You decided you wanted to break this up. I've shown you how to unite, but I haven't shown you how to break things up. And let's say we want to lasso and make some half square triangles here. Oops. There we go. I'm going to unite that. And then I'm going to come here and unite this half. There we go. Unite. So now I'm going to change that. So with a piece select to, let's say we want it a dark color. And we'll make this one blue just for the heck of it. Okay, so you could do that. Now I want to save this to my library. So I'm going to come up here and go up to the application button and say save to library. And we'll call this modified block 20. And it'll be saved to my block library. So now if you look in my blocks and we go down to the M's, here's my modified block 20, right? So if I go to my tools tab here, export project, uh, this is where you can do that. And this is just a block. So if you're not planning on combining it with anything else, you can do that. It's going to automatically save it to my block library. I guess I could have skipped that little step. Um, it's only going to do one repeat of each of them. And if you heard me talking at least 0.20 between as your spacing works best, tell it where you want it to go and then name it. We're going to call this block 20 modified. And we'll export that. So here you go. These are your files. So now let me go over to my Canvas workspace and let's import those to see what they look like. So let's import from our computer and that would be in advanced quilt design software folder. Oh, what did I call that one? Modified. Did I not tell it where I wanted it to go? Hold on a second. Y'all know me. I am terrible about remembering where I sent things. Let's see where this went to. Uh, it should just be an advanced quilt design software. So let's go back there. Wrong one. Wrong icon. Maybe it's untitled too, but I swear I called it something. Block 20 modified. There you go. You, it does help if you remember what you call something. So there are my pieces that for that are the cream. And then I can simply send those to my scanning cup. If you want to see the image, let's come back over here to our file folder. And I'm going to go to my view tab and go to large icons. So I, I oh, there we go. Now it's where you just got to give it a minute. So this is my block. These are the parts and it's giving you the inner, the other items. Okay. Now let's see here. Um, Now, there's actually a playbook, too, a Luminaire 2 playbook, okay? So, <laughs> you got the Dream Machine upgrade one. Cool. I, I knew it was you and you had actually, you hit that angry face accidentally a lot. <laughs> Um, yes, it is a it is a standalone standalone quilt designing software. You do not have to have any other programs to use it. Okay, uh, but up here, yep, catch that replay, Shirley. We are going to talk about my connection on the first one, and we may do something else, but we're really going to focus on that my connection on the first one. 
And then we're going to start take since we had set that up already, then we're going to take questions from there and that will drive where we go. Okay. So, and if you all don't remember, just so I remind you, if you have not asked to join our new group, uh, where did that go? Where's my banner? Well, I'll be darned. It's hiding. Oh, I just have to go down far enough. The Education Connection. Okay, so it's a Facebook Live group. Um, it is private. You must answer the questions and agree to the terms. And if you do that, then you will be automatically added to the group. We will not have to do anything else besides just add you to the group. And, and I'm sure we are sure glad you are enjoying the group. Um, Heather and I really want this to be interactive. You guys drive the content. So we're, we're trying to make it interactive. The Education Connection is the name of it. If you type that into your search menu in Facebook, the Facebook search, it will take you to that. And all you got to do is answer the questions and agree to the terms. Basically, we're telling you, you must play nice in the sandbox and you may not advertise for others um, because it is our group. If we want to advertise, we will. <laughs> And we are not we are not there to be the advertising for the rest of the world. So um, that is that's our theory on that. OK, um, that is but that is our that is our topic. So if you guys want, remind me, I'm going to sit here and pop up some coupon codes for the week. Since it is my husband's work birthday week, we'll do coupons this week. He'll just love that. Uh, <laughs> here you go. It is not active yet. I will make it active when we get off of here. So LET4, because I just decided we would do this. It is his birthday on Thursday. So we'll say happy birthday to Brian. Um, this is for the lettering so easy for BES4 workbook. There is another lettering so easy on my site, but that is for the lower, the fir very first edition we ever put out. Okay. Or that brother ever put out. DIG 10 would be your digitizing so easy for version 10 workbook, which is what I currently sell for both 10 and 11. All right. So, yeah, give him one for his birthday. I, it, unless he used it as something. Okay. So, in case y'all haven't noticed, I'm kind of on the petite height, stature, size. My husband is not real tall either. So about the only thing that he might use it for is to sit on to raise himself up. He's taller than I am and that's all that matters in my world. Uh, so yeah, um, so we it, play nice in the sandbox. That's, I, I really just don't want people being ugly. I don't have time for the drama, truly. Um, help each other out when you can. If, you know, don't take offense if somebody has a different way of doing it than you have. Uh, I believe last night we answered a question about a PR 10, uh, 655. Many people had different suggestions. So truly, uh, just it just depends on, there's a, most things are easy to troubleshoot. But if you haven't tried something, maybe it's just not obvious to you. So I, I don't mind everybody piping in and having their suggestions. If you don't know, don't worry about it. I mean, a, a 655 should run pretty much at full bore without any problems. So basically, it's either the thread, the needle, or the stabilizer, or the tension. So, I mean, those those are really your four little things that it should be. And it, um, besides the fact that black thread is the darkest thread, so it has more of a dye in it. So it takes longer for it to for the color to be absorbed, to saturate it, which makes it the weakest thread in the color palette. Having said that, if you have a quality thread that is not old, I mean, there is a shelf life to threads. If you have a quality thread that, that is a poly thread, uh, now that's not saying that poly is the only thing I use because Lord knows there's, I have matte finished threads, I have rayons, I have cottons, I have it, silks. So uh, there are many different threads that I use 
but I know that my rayons have a shorter shelf life than my polys. Okay. But just simply because they get brittle. Polys don't get brittle as fast. Um, I will say that the, you know, my poly threads are brother thread. I, you can see that's what I use because that's what I'm pretty much, it, unless I can't get it, that color in it, I use the brother threads. If I can't find um, the brother thread, then I'll go, I'll, I'll venture to another brand. Yes, operator error also happens to, to, the, to the world, including myself. I don't know if y'all heard it the other day, but I, when I was doing the Facebook Live with Angela, I said, yeah, and it does help to remember if you have a move it foot and you're using it to plug the darn thing in because I forgot to plug mine in. And I, it happens to all of us. And Karen, you cannot tell on me. Of course, you don't know his phone number, but <laughs> don't, don't tell on me. Um, he, he's not that short, but he is taller than I am, but he's not a tall man. I mean, neither of us hit the six foot height. Neither is <laughs> true. We're both under six foot. We're we're not we're not tall people. Um so I mean it really does. Uh Brother Thread is Pace Setter or yeah, they've changed back to the name of Pace Setter. You may have seen at, you may have seen it called Simplicity before. So we're about I do believe we're back to the Pace Setter name. It is the same thread. Um it is not bro thread that you see on Amazon. Okay. Don't buy that. I'm going to sit here telling you, do not buy that. Stick to reputable name brands. And she was doing a reputable name brand. It's not a brand that I've ever used, but it, it was a reputable brand. So it, it really just depends. And, you know, if you're using it upright, you might want to make sure you have the little mini king spools instead of the other. All right, guys. Yes, you will laugh at yourself when you do that. And you will remember that I did it. I mean, I've told people that I've sewn through. Let's see here. I did a hat that was denim. So I sewed through the front of the denim. And you know that the seam in the hat has at least four seam, four, four layers, right? And then I sewed through the tab, which had two layers of denim together and the seams. And then it had Velcro and then it had another one of those. So count those layers. And I went through that with a 7511 needle and didn't break the thread. But my machine was doing this in the cap frame. And I'm like, well, I, I remember that Paulette Bell told me that I should never, ever need any needle on a multi-needle machine other than a 7511. But I'd be darned if I don't. So I changed that needle out to a 9014. And I went and sure enough, it didn't pop anymore. But when I took it off the machine, I'd actually sewn the back to the front. And I did not know that I could do that. So 7511 needle is generally what I use. That is, unless it's a specialty needle, a 7511 is generally what I'm doing. And I have sewn completely, actually, no, it didn't go completely through. The bone stopped it, Karen. That is how my email, my original email address came as was finger sewn because my husband's a bit of a smart aleck. And I, it, this was back in the early days. It was my first, it was my 8200. So it was my second embroidery machine. And I was sewing a Disney design out uh, because my dealer had gotten one of the Japanese Disney cards back before the U.S. had them. And he had brought it back. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll do that for Molly. And I'd be darned if I didn't stitch into my finger with a brand new sharp point needle. Had to have it surgically removed. That was fun. So anyhow. Um, uh, you know, I'm a, bro I, I'm a brother thread girl. And that, that is my, I mean, that, that is my go-to thread. So, I mean, there are other brands out there. But, you know, every, and I'll tell you this, every machine has its own personality and a thread that it likes best. And when you find that sweet spot for your thread, go for it. In general, I know that if I, regardless of which machine in this house I put my brother thread on, it's going to run well, including I have a little SE625. So it goes from my low end to my high end and does a beautiful job on all of them. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Been there, done that, got that t-shirt. We all do the funny things. So, 
Oh, wow, Cindy, that, oh, how, oh, that hurts me just to think of it. Edna, um, do you need it? You know, that's a relative term. I find that I love it because it's got way more clearance in the back. Uh, let me see if I can go show you the difference between the two. Real quick. I got to find where I put my old one. Well, shoot. I've hidden my old one on myself. And of course I wouldn't put it back. Ah, there it is. Okay. Here we go. So, old one. Here we go. This is what you see. New one. Now, if we look at where the... I don't know if you can tell. Much different size. And if you look here, if I put them up side by side, do you see how much more clearance this one has than this one? Because they're both going to rest on that base machine. So the back end is in there so much better. Okay. And how you tell them the difference? Well, the cord on the new one, the tail comes out the top. The cord on the old one, the tail comes out the middle. So I love this new move it foot. I will say uh, it because that's one of the main things we complained about is that things would get, you know, we'd have to help things along underneath it. And so they redesigned it and they listened to the feedback. And I do love the new. So do you really need it? Need is a relative term. I'll give you permission to go buy it because it will make your life easier. Um, no, Josie, it wasn't. It, it was just my tin needle. So um, it, the, the, the multi-needle machines can go through thicker materials with le because they have more torque. Uh, and I love my Move It Foot as well. And I loved the old one, but it I do like the new one because the um, it, it just the way it is. Is it now? What are you saying? Now, you shouldn't be able to get it on Crooked, but I don't know. I, I haven't tr ever tried that. Yeah, um, I'm with you, Sandra. Okay. I, I, have, I have way less breakage when I use my Simplicity thread, my Simplicity Pay Setter thread. Um, yeah, that would be another brand that I like. Yes, it does have the on off switch. So here is, is your off. If you go all the, if you go up, off, if you go on down, same way with this one. So they both have that and they're both on the same side. Uh, yes, Karen, you can buy just that. Oh yeah, it's totally embedded in the bone. And I waited a week to go to the doctor. This was back when I was teaching school and I had special needs children and I was teaching middle school and one of my special needs children just light and my hand had gotten really swollen. <laughs> I'm like, well, I either have tetanus or that needle still in there needs to come out. So my hand had gotten huge by that Friday and one of my children had just lightly squeezed it and I thought I was going to come out of my chair. And so I go to the doctor and he goes, they, you know, what, what, what did you do? Well, I sewed my finger. And the first thing that everybody does is cringe. And then they just start bursting out laughing. You talk, And I had it surgically removed and they're laughing. That is not just fun. That was too funny. Um, yes, that it fits any machine that has a move it foot. So that would be the Dream, the Stellaire, the 3100s, the 24, the, the, the sewing only in the BQ series. Um, so anything that came with a move it foot or that can use a move it foot, the plug in version, if you have a plug in the back viewers and you had a move it foot, you can certainly use it now. So the new one works with all of them. Okay. <laughs> Kelly says, if your machine uses it, you need it. There's your sign. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. Um, did, did you have it plugged in? 
or did it get stuck? It's the getting stuck in the back end was the biggest thing. So, yes, I waited to, I, no, I didn't even go to the hospital then. I went to the doctor's office. I didn't get it surgically removed till the next week. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it is kind of one of those things. It was, but that's how I got my email address, my finger sewn email address is where that came from. So that is my junk email address these days. But at that time, that's, that's what it was. And I went with that email address for a long, long time. So, all right, guys, if there is nothing else today, be sure to send in your questions for next week. Um, because that's that, as you can see, that is how I prepare for things. So have fun, enjoy some of the techniques that we did today, go out and play with your software. And once again, if you have not joined it, the group name is the education connection. Be sure and agree to the terms, agree to the rules and answer the questions. I can't stress that enough and tell you how many people haven't done that. And LET4 is your lettering so easy workbook coupon code. DIG10 is the one for the digitizing so easy for version 10 book. Okay. All right, guys, you all have a wonderful rest of your week and I shall see you next week. Bye.